You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. I'm back. Rudrance for Black and White Sports 2. If you're new to the channel, pop that subscribe, like, comment, share it out. Let's go, folks. Okay, so we're going to talk about Michael Orr. As you guys know, Michael Orr had an NFL career, pretty good NFL career. As a lineman, pretty good, pretty good. Made about $30 million and helped several different teams out. Baltimore Ravens, one of those teams. And uh, Michael Orr, of course, was the guy that was uh, portrayed in the movie The Blind Side, Sandra Bullock was in that, Tim McGraw, and of course, I think Nick Saban did a cameo in that uh, movie. Well, a lot of controversy going on with Michael Orr because uh, he's seeking to end his conservatorship with the Tui family. Now, the Tui family, they welcome this kid in, it was a kid at the time, 18 years old, well, adult slash kid, I, I'm, I'm 48, so an 18-year-old is kind of a kid still to me, but the point is... They welcomed him in, and he got to get into Ole Miss, good college career, and then got drafted. Well, now he is coming out, and he's saying he has been, for lack of a better way of putting it, sort of robbed out of a lot of monies, and that the Tui family was seeking to use his personality and his persona and his story to capitalize. Now, the only problem is this smells like dog shit, okay? And the reason it does is, point of fact, the Tui family was very very well off. In fact, to be honest with what they're worth, anything involving Michael Orr was peanuts, okay? We're talking about a family that owned over 100 KFC restaurants and Taco Bells. Doesn't sound like you could parlay that into money. How about the 200 million bucks is what they sold all them restaurants for? That's right. And this family was very well off. They tried to help this kid out. Now, Look, it's funny because the mainstream media refuses, I, I've noticed, to take a negative angle in Michael Orr's direction. And in my opinion, that's probably due to race. He's black, and we've found out with many different situations over the last three years, if you're black, the mainstream media is not going to criticize you unless... You are somebody like Jason Whitlock. Now, Jason Whitlock is a black journalist, a very well-known one, a guy that I have consumed for some 20 years probably. Started out in Kansas City. Damn good uh, journalist back then. ESPN, I mean, and ran the gamut of shows, including FS1's first take. He's over at The Blaze now. He's got a really good podcast and YouTube show called Fearless. Well, um... Jason Whitlock has come out, and he has slammed the hell out of Michael Orr. He's actually calling him out, and he believes what Michael Orr is doing to this family now. I He's got a full article on this on The Blaze, and it's very long, you know, but it's worth a good read. Uh, this is the New York Post, but the one thing he did bring up in all this is, look, this story is going to give white Christians some real pause when it comes to helping uh, somebody in the future. And this is going to be a bad look, and this is going to have possible repercussions involving others in the future and people being hesitant to reach out and do the right thing to try to help people out. Um, this whole thing feels absolutely bogus. It truly does. I don't know if Michael Orr's broke now. I don't know what's going on. All right, because you're just 30 million versus I don't know how much money we're actually talking about. Uh, the author of a book has already come out that was a book about him. They're saying he was fully aware of this conservatorship. He's claiming he thought he was adopted. A lot of people are starting to shoot uh, holes into Michael Orr's claims. Jason Whitlock has chosen his side with the Michael Orr Tui family drama. The Whitlock, the controversial Blaze TV host, ripped Orr for claiming in a petition that the Tui family did not adopt him and tricked him into signing away his name for potential business deals. It just doesn't make any sense. 
It, it really doesn't. When you're that financially wealthy, they're just not going to be concerned with that kind of money, in my opinion, which just wasn't that much money. And he has now, of course, been been accused of a shakedown, like essentially trying to sort of blackmail the family, for lack of a better way of putting it, into trying to give up $15 million. So in other words, Michael Orr is quite aware of the financial standing of this family, aside from his story. Orr filed a lawsuit against the Tui family this week and asserted he was fooled into signing documents for conservatorship. Quote, what he's doing to the de- Tui family is despicable, Whitlock said Tuesday on Fearless. He's telling an obvious lie. He knows most of the media will be too afraid to question it because he's black. There you go. Plus, the media is lazy. It's easier to repeat Orr's allegations than to question and or research the legitimacy of them. It's easier just to feel sorry for Michael Orr, Whitlock continued. Whitlock said he came to the conclusion after rereading Orr's book, I Beat the Odds, and then re-watching The Blind Side, the movie based on Orr's life. The opinionated host seemed to have the most umbrage with Orr's claims in a 14-page legal petition that only discovered in February that he had not been adopted but instead signed documents for conservatorship, which gave control of his finances to the Tui family. The Tui family has denied the claims, especially that they profited to great levels from the movie starring Sandra Bullock. By the way, I did a video yesterday. The Wokes are banging the drum for Sandra Bullock to give up the Oscar for having portrayed Leanne Tui. What does her portrayal of a character Having been handed a script and a story, what does that have to do with her having to give her Oscar up and all of this? That makes no sense to me. That's absurd. It's one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. A lawyer for the family related a statement to TMZ accusing Orr of a $15 million shakedown, calling Orr's claims, quote, outlandish, hurtful, and absurd. Why on earth is Michael Orr pretending he only recently discovered the Tui family didn't adopt him, question mark, Whitlock said. Why are members of the media going along with Orr's effort to shake down the Tui family for cash under the pretense that they lied to and exploited him for profit? Orr has expressed his dissatisfaction with the blind side, but that didn't stop Whitlock from ripping the former NFL offensive lineman for his claims stating he lacks self-awareness, humility, and quite possibly intelligence. Whoa! Uh, You can always leave it to Whitlock to absolutely smoke somebody. Michael Orr is so arrogant and delusional that he believes his natural intellect would have developed regardless of circumstances. It's a naive worldview. He's still naive. In other words, he's saying, look... Maybe you would not have turned out to be a such a great man had the Tuies not helped you out. It's an interesting take, and it could very well be a, a, a valid one. They put him in a sound, stable environment. I'm just saying. He believes this desperate attempt to shake down the family that welcomed him into his home is a good look and is going to lead to a financial windfall. It's not. As lazy as the media is, as lazy as reporters and pundits are, they're going to have to deal with the truth, Whitlock said. The Tuies were wealthy when they took legal guardianship of Orr. They sold their family business for $200 million. They had no financial motive to exploit Orr. Absolutely, I agree with that. Whitlock, while tearing into Orr, seemingly took everything said by the Tuies family at face value. They're putting out this whole expletive, uh, exploitative uh, conservatorship nonsense. It's like Britney Spears' family controlling all of our money. Michael, reporters, the world, the Tuies have and have always had more money than Michael Orr. They also have more class, decency, and compassion than Orr. Their side makes perfect sense. 
Here's the deal that everybody's going to have to come to grips with. Michael Orr is every bit as emotionally broken as the first day as an overgrown teenager that he slept on the Tui's couch. Wow. Wow. Uh, question, and he asked the question, where would you be without the Tui's? I mean, it's, it's valid. It's a valid question to ask. I mean, look. You're famous, Michael Orr. All right. You played professional football, Michael Orr. Who's more well-known at this point, you or them? I mean, let's let's be honest here. I mean, the average run-of-the-mill person, especially if they follow football, is going to know who Michael Orr is, even as a player, right? Regardless, the point is, would you have ever made it there without them? Extending their hand and, well... The saddest part about all this is they welcomed this kid in. And now he's giving them essentially a double middle finger for their trouble. And that's sad. They reached out and tried to help somebody. And, and, you know, that's part of what you're supposed to do. But you see this story, it's certainly going to bring a certain hesitancy going forward with people trying to help somebody just like this. Oh, why should I do that? Because 10 years from now, they may come back and F me over it. And Michael Orr is trying to F these folks. Let's just be real. Absolutely. That is what's going on here. I'm sorry, but I can't help but believe Michael Orr has fully and completely uh, wrapped his loving arms around the media narrative that blacks in this country are exploited for, for gain, all right? That's, that's what this feels like. Oh, well, this is what I'm hearing. This is what I've been told. I'm a victim. Come on, man. I mean, that kills me. That's right up there with all these other athletes that are black claiming to be oppressed. What? What? You made generational wealth. Shut up. I mean, it's absurd completely. Tell me what you think, black and white sports supporters. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.